Dude, look at yeah. that guy. Look at that dude. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Beller Family Fun. Today is a good day to have a good day. And today, we have four hogs in the trap. My hog man already got them loaded in the holding trailer, so we're just going to go load them up in another trailer, take them over to the cleaning spot, and clean them up. Now, someone had asked how I clean them, because on the last video, it just kind of jumps from us having them to, uh, to having meat. So today, I'm going to show you what I do. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the right way to do it. It's just the way that I kind of fumble through it. So come along. Let's clean some hogs. That old tripod. <laughs> old tripod. These are the things you will need. Stuff to cut with. We'll bring some gloves, pliers, the hook to hang them up, some ice to throw on the meat, and most importantly, you gotta stay lubed. All right, let's get started. Pretty standard, puncture behind the tendon, string them up just like most animals. What? Uh, what I get out of the majority of these hogs is the tenderloin and the back strap. So with that in mind, I just kind of make these cuts right across, uh, kind of arch across the top and then uh, down, down the sides. That will, uh, and then I'll remove all of the uh, the innards. I'm showing the tenderloins right there. They're just on the inside of the uh, of the spine and the and the ribs, and they're very tight when you hang them up like that. So. If, uh, what I found is if you kind of clean them up as you go, get them loose from the rest of the body, and then cut them top and bottom to break them loose, then uh, that's the easiest way to get those off. That's my hog man, uh, Wayne Hogman, or uh, AKA Toasty, AKA Tito. I uh, wouldn't recommend uh, cutting up an animal uh, simultaneously with somebody else, but uh, we worked pretty well together and we communicated quite a bit through the uh, through the process. So I would uh, take out the tenderloins, then I would spin it around and finish uh, removing the back strap. So he's taking the skin, uh, removing the skin and just making it a lot easier for me to spin around and remove the meat. Uh, when removing the meat, uh, if it's just a, a single hog, I'm going to try to clean up a lot of that. You can see some of that silver skin on there. Try to clean up some of that silver skin and just get a little bit more kitchen ready. Uh, right here, I'm removing 
the back strap. So I'm cutting it loose just just uh, just above the hip, or I guess below the hip in this uh, from this angle, and then kind of cutting it down. And sometimes if you can get it get it loose uh, just right, then you can kind of tear it down and it comes off pretty clean. The the back strap on these larger larger hogs is a little bit uh, a little bit more tough. Generally, what I do with those is make medallions, season them up real well, and and, and sous vide them or uh, or slow cook them that away. The back straps seem to be woven in a little bit more tightly to the spine, so make uh, some some nice cuts down the spine, trying not to dull your blade on uh, on the bone. Uh, I've already cut off uh, just above the hip and cut down each side of that back strap. And like I said, you can uh, if you get it just right, you can also just uh, pull it the rest of the way down. Sometimes, like here, I'll just uh, cut it down, and I'm cleaning it up a little bit more. We did four hogs this day, so uh, I didn't do as much cleaning as uh, as I wanted to, as far as cleaning up the meat. Um, uh, as far as this little hog goes, uh, with these smaller hogs, the tenderloin is truly tender. I mean, I don't know if I show it in this clip, but it is super, super tender. Uh, you can't just rip it out like it, like I did on that first tenderloin. It will tear in half. It's it's that tender, and they are that tender and juicy once you you know cook them and eat them. They're very, they're very good. This is a perfect size hog for uh, tenderloin and backstrap. Right, there's that first uh, tenderloin and it, it was almost like holding jello it's, it's super tender and you can when you cook it up right it it's like you can cut it with a fork super super easy uh, the back strap is the back strap it's not gonna be as tender as the tenderloin but again on this size hog it is they are they're just right I would say if you're gonna pick and choose start with this one right here it's probably anywhere you know 50 60 pounds is uh, is is perfect all right and on to the last one same procedure uh, I think this time we cut uh, a little bit more off of the sides so that it was a little bit more free. Also, when removing the back, I'm sorry, when removing the tenderloin, you can often, with minimal cutting, uh, kind of jam your fingers in on either side of that uh, of that tenderloin and run it up and down, kind of free it from the rest of the body. Because so then all you have to do at that point is uh, slice the top and the bottom and it comes uh, comes off free very nicely. You can see I'm kind of working my fingers around it and then once it uh, comes off and flip it around take the rest of it off. You see there we kind of cut a little bit more off of the uh, just above the hips. One last thing before you bring the meat into the kitchen is to age it. I wet age it by um, putting all the meat in a cooler, covering it in ice, and leaving it there for a week periodically adding more ice and draining water. This keeps it nice and cold and it, uh, it makes a huge difference in the flavor of the meat. And that is pretty much it. So I want to thank you for your, uh, for your comments and your questions and uh, keep them coming. If uh, there's anything else you'd like to see, just, uh, just let me know. Um, appreciate you watching. And we'll catch you on the next one.